What is up, boils and ghouls? Welcome to the Horror Fiend. I am Jeff. Joining me today is the most badass of the badasses when it comes to Nightmare on Elm Street. It is Miss Elisa Wilcox. Thank you for agreeing to be on the show, ma'am. Well, thank you ever so much. Happy to be here. Yes, and uh, boils and ghouls, we have been working on getting this done for a while now. <laughs> so, uh, there, so I, it's I am excited for this. Like I really am. I am, Yay! I am definitely excited. <laughs> Here so, we are. Yeah. So first off, let me just ask, how have you been? Like, how's everything been going with you lately? Uh, well, in general, I had. Well, you got the cold too. I had a horrible flu cold for two weeks, and wasn't COVID. It may as well have been, but anyway, because um, I have you know self harm stuff so that was a bummer but but overall things have been going great I just won an, an award uh for best supporting actress in the movie I called um murder anyone which will be available soon and I had a mystery spot a film I did just before COVID came out and we won awards and you know I left acting for a long time you know I married had children and all that so I got back into acting about I want to say five years ago, six years ago. And then of course, let's subtract that by two years because of COVID. Yeah. Shut everything <laughs> the year down. Of COVID, I had seven films I was supposed to do oh, and wow. conventions of course and all that. And so, you know, so anyway, things have been great. I've, tra I've probably traveled like 200,000 miles this year, honestly, um, for conventions and filming. Uh, I have another film that Danny Hassel is in you know, Dan, yep, boyfriend, Dan. Nightmare 4 or 5, right? Yep. <laughs> and Mark Patton from Nightmare 4, a uh, 2. two uh, yeah, we actually two. did a film together. So there's going to be a premiere in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, beginning of um, January. And uh, so, you know, just, I, I don't know what to say. I can't believe it's already like the middle of November. And I, it's, I been, it's been really busy. And I'm really, really grateful. It, it definitely seems like this year has flown by quicker now, now that it seems like the world is opening up again, now that people yeah. are starting to realize COVID is just going to be around now, but now things seem to be getting back into the swing of it, like conventions and everything else, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and you said you've been, you've been doing a lot of conventions. I know you were out here in Albuquerque where we live, and I met you. That was the first time I met you out here was during that convention for Albuquerque Comic Con, and um it was just nice like just seeing that environment and like it was great just seeing how everybody was responding how everybody's been acting and everything else um do you have any conventions coming up like within the next few months any new conventions yes ma'am did you say yeah i have a uh, germany uh wow. in a town uh that's the first week of december and robert's going to be there and twin newkirk and brookby's and I it's going to be great. I haven't done a European show in a while because of COVID. Exactly. <laughs> but again, it's um, I'm sure it's going to be great. And I know I, I get, you know, Instagram messages. When are you coming back to Europe? When are you coming back to Europe? So that's this that's just in two weeks. So that'll that's be great. great. Um, I'll be doing a signing actually in Palm Springs. There's a very famous um, art festival that happens out there every year. And it goes pretty much from Thanksgiving all the way through Christmas. So I'll be there in yep. December. And I definitely some really awesome conventions next year, but I'm not allowed to say yet. Uh, but, you know, just if you, I'm trying to be better about my website yeah. and posting where I'm going to be or what's happening and stuff, which is Lisa E. Wilcox. Don't forget the E, Lisa E. Wilcox.com. Um, and I have more filming happening. I'm going to be in uh, uh, Wisconsin, also in January, filming a, a, a film called What Happened to Dorothy Bell. And I play this great character. And oh, 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 and filmed something called um, Demon Hunter. And it's their second one, nice. uh, Demon Hunter, Time to Kill. And it's actually an Irish production company, but we filmed in Kentucky. And I play this so evil, you can't even believe it. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, there's just, it's been, so when you ask, 
<laughs> how I did. You opened Pandora's box. That, that's exactly <laughs> why. That's why I wanted to do it. Is because oh, okay. It's a good All way, right. like, All right. good yeah. way yeah. to get information out there. That way, everybody who's watching this video, like when it uploads and in the future, it's like they're, but now they know. They're like, oh, we got to check this out. We got to check that out. So, yeah. Um, and Bloody Man came out this summer. And Mystery Spot is also available, like, on Amazon Prime and, and whatnot. I'm very proud of that Mystery Spot. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically a film about, um, guilt and facing our guilt and it but it, but more importantly it's about forgiving ourselves uh very very proud about this this uh lead role that i that i did um and it won um it won some stuff at the Buff big uh, buffalo film festival and 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 whatnot and also demon hunter um they we just filmed it like two months ago um but but the director put together like a teaser kind of thing which played at the film festival in Ireland. And then next year, the film will be done. And so they're gonna fly me out. So I, I'm, ex I'm excited to have a trip to Ireland. I've always That's wanted to go great. to Scotland. I'm Scottish descent. So I'm yeah. finally gonna get my chance to go to Scotland. <laughs> See, I'm Irish and German, and you're going like you're literally going. I have stuff. Irish in me too. My mom is redhead, green eyed, beautiful woman. Uh, like you, look at your red. <laughs> it's, it's all there. There's some yeah, gray now my, too, but it's yeah, all there. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. And my granddaughter is, she's a ginger. So anyway, but my dad is the Scottish side, so he's blonde. Yep. And interesting enough, genetically, blonde will override red hair. But I get to be, I but I had red hair and uh, Alice is playing Alice. They asked yep, me to dye did. my hair. Um, so, which uh, I, of course, agreed to. And they, well, I didn't agree to dye it. They put a rinse on my hair every single morning oh my gosh so they and literally then it kept stained my hair it's like throwing red paint on white you know what i mean yeah so but anyway totally so worth like it. that little stain do it no matter what for a while y yeah yeah and then <laughs> at five they said no more rinse you know so you see my hair my real hair coming back to life anyway whole other story that's awesome <laughs> So I do have a few questions that I have had some of the viewers, they sent me questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and read some of them off if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, hold on, let me get in my phone. That would be helpful. So the first question that I got is, oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna use that one. Okay, so you play Alice in two of the movies and you are the only woman, I guess it's more of a statement kind of a question too. But it says, so you played Alice in two of the movies, part four and five, and you're the only one who has gone back to back and survived Freddy Krueger. Can Alice, like when, now with the West Craven estate having the rights back to everything, can Alice possibly be making a comeback in the future? Would you play Alice again if the opportunity arose? I absolutely would play Alice again. It's one of my favorite roles in my career. And I've done hun over a hundred different roles. Now, Alice is very, very close to my heart. And, you know, there was a period of time where I was like, I never got my death scene. This just is not <laughs> fair. I never got a death scene. And then one day a light bulb went off and I went, oh, Alice lives. And in exactly. fact, I had t-shirts made, Alice lives, you know? which to me is a pseudonym for, it could be Jane, Mary, Becky, John, whatever, but yeah. to survive, to survive terror, to survive strife, you know? Exactly. And like Alice in the movies, like me and you talked about this when you were here for Albuquerque. Um, like I had you sign an autograph. I'll show a picture of it. Like in the, in the video when my editor's doing this. Um, I had you sign an autograph for me saying, Freddie is my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, because it's true. Freddie is Alice's bitch because everybody else, I think, except for Jesse, you know, Mark Patton, like, because he just, he has that one and done and he's gone. But Alice literally goes back to bath. And like, the thing about Alice is, so this is going on in the 80s when, you know, the woman power thing wasn't necessarily big yet. You know, it, it took off more like in the 90s, but, and I just had a conversation with, um, like, Melanie Kidman and a few other people about this as well, as far as, like, the woman power thing, because in the 80s, 
women were the badass in the in the in the horror movies like it was always like jamie lee curtis and halloween uh heather langenkamp yourself you know a lot of the women in the nightmare on elm street series and in my opinion the horror movies in the 80s like from 70s onward actually like if there is the the birth of woman power in my opinion was during that time because you never see it's rare when you see the guy go into a horror movie and survive he, he gets killed <laughs> <laughs> and you like you said it yourself like you you didn't have your your death scene but you're like one of the very few that like you survived you know you went back I survived, to that yeah, it's and- not like not like Heather Langenkamp when she she does one, comes back in three, dies in three, and then comes back in New Nightmare because New Nightmare is like its whole separate entity. Right. So you have that right. honor, that distinct honor of being like the only person to go back to back. And yeah. like all the loss that Alice had in those two movies and how strong she got. Like you see her transformation in the in part four, which is awesome. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, you did a phenomenal job in that movie. Just seeing Thank how you, you like Alice's character from start to finish, just how much she changed and adapted. And I, we all know it's because like she's absorbing each person that's passing away and everything else. Mm-hmm. But how you did it was just Thank mind you. blowing. It was a well, great, great job. Honestly, the script, you know, when I, you know, got the script, and I mean, and it's just, it's a beautiful script because it's not that often as actors that we get to have such a character arc from shy and wallflower and timid and scared, you know, and then to evolve to, you know, badass Alice, right? Mm-hmm. So um, what I did, cause I wanted it to, you know, absolutely be believable, you know, that she just wasn't like this and then this, you know what I mean? Yeah. That it had to, it had to be gradual. And of course we don't film in order of the scenes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what I did is, you know, we could be filming scene 47 in the morning and then scene number three in the afternoon kind of thing, right? It's all over the place. So what I did in my script is I wrote, because basically Alice's powers come from her friends that pass away and she embodies their powers. And not only their good habits, but some of their bad habits. Remember, yep. like now smoking in the bathroom? Exactly. Because <laughs> Kristen's died and now I'm smoking. And I'm like, what's yeah. going on here? You know? I don't but smoke. But that's because I bring in all that. So in my script, I wrote for each scene who had passed. And so it could give me a, 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 a sensation of what level Alice is at in her, her art of power. And um, so thank you for, for um, thank you for saying that, you know, it was, it's, it's not like pulling a rabbit out of a hat. Okay. <laughs> exactly. And like, it's impressive. Like, and I think it's one of those things that often get passed up on. It's like, you literally went through every, every emotion and it showed that character literally evolving. Like by the end of part four, like that that beginning Alice like was totally gone totally gone and it was it was brilliant like honestly it really was and then we get into part five and that was a question that I have like I'll, I'll get back to the viewer questions but a question that I had so in part five Alice seems you know because she closed the door she closed that gate because she's practically the gatekeeper of everything now she knows like she's the dream master and so how when you got into when you got into the role with part five and they brought you back for that. Yeah. What was your, like, after reading the script and everything else, what was your mentality going into this? Like, okay, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do Alice even higher than that last <laughs> one? Cause you did like, it, I didn't think you were going to be able to go above, like above that. And you did like, you still like Alice still showed like that she was confident at the beginning of that movie. And then like she starts like almost regressing, like going back, like she's starting to lose that confidence a little bit. And yeah. then she remembers who the hell yeah. she is. Yeah, well, when, <laughs> you know, Dan, the father of my child dies um, and then trying to figure out what what's what's happening, what's, mm-hmm. what's happening and then finally realizing Freddie's getting in through my baby's dreams, you know, um, so I kind of had to start over in a way, cause now it's about my child. Um, mm-hmm. but 
And so that's where I think when Alice gets her groove on again, you know, yeah. I, I love the scene when, you know, Dan's parents want to adopt the baby or suggesting that. And, and, the, and now though, I have my father on my side. He's sober now. I know and he's he sober. Is solid. And I now have a parent, a parent on my side because exactly. nightmare four, there's no parents on anyone's side. You know yeah, what he, I mean? He's drunk half the time. Exactly. And... He, you know, so it's such a whole different rhythm in Nightmare 5. And, you know, interesting enough, I look at Nightmare 5 as a very brave film. We're talking about 1989. Yep. We're dealing with teen pregnancy. At all time. High is she going to have an abortion? Mm -hmm. uh, is she going to give the child up? And parents wanting to take the child thinking I'm not a fit mother. Uh, then, oh, let's talk about Greta. We're talking about the self image, bulimia, anorexia, the, the, yep. the parents that are stage moms. They, you know, I mean, there's so much in this film for 1989. It was a bit of a hard, <laughs> it's hard even to chew on, you know, it was like, this isn't particularly entertaining. I don't want to think about my teenage daughter getting pregnant and having sex before marriage, <laughs> and blah, 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 right? And nowadays, we can talk about all this stuff at the dinner table. Back then- It's the norm no. now. <laughs> yeah. But that's another thing too. Like, uh, like I mentioned, like Dan in the movie, he had those parents, like his dad more specifically was like pressuring him with the football scholarship, you know? Yeah. That's a thing too. Like that, even to this day, that's still a thing. You know, kids need to feel like they got to- push themselves especially when it comes to sports just to make their parents happy so like all these issues that people didn't really necessarily focus on back then like all that's at the forefront now so like nightmare five is i hate i don't use this often but it was kind of ahead of its time like with all it was, that especially uh, you now. know what thank you for saying that it was way ahead of its time and it just wasn't something people were I think comfortable dealing with yet you know what I mean yeah. but I love the fact that this that's why I call it such a brave script you know that that it was ahead of its time and it was dealing with the reality I mean just think of it Nightmare Force finished what are we going to do what's our next film going to be mm -hmm. and the fact that they took it to this depth I think is just absolutely forward thinking. Yeah. And I love the fact that they actually, they use the child too, like Jacob, they use him in the movie, which I thought was really cool. I thought it was a unique take on everything because mm -hmm. like he's communicating with you. And at first, like, you're like, who the hell is this person? You know, he's just like a little <laughs> kid. Like everybody thought, okay, he's just, he's baby. He's in that hospital. But then you actually like later on, you find out that is not the case. He is technically, but he's inside you and like the whole like again we don't see those in movies like you go back and you can look at friday the 13th you can look at halloween's you can look at like all these other horror movies and we've never seen something like that before and it was really yeah. cool and like robert shay and all them like they they're awesome like obviously they are they're great with that like yeah and but you guys you guys brought it to life and you guys made it good and again like you're acting in those movies in four and five is just it's great like i i still can't get over it, it reminds me and like this is going to be pretty high okay and i'm not kissing ass or anything i swear to god i'm not <laughs> but i look at how your character was in four and five and i really compare it to jamie lee curtis and halloween and how in halloween and that was jamie lee curtis's first role right but yeah. in halloween she's like uh, just a, a babysitter you know she's a smart girl in high school <laughs> yeah. and a babysitter and she meets Michael and all that stuff starts happening and like she goes through all those emotions and everything else and then mm. near the end she becomes the survivor girl well, thank and, you that's a huge compliment you yeah know? just how both of those are literally like I remember watching it as I got older when I was younger I never had those comparisons but now horror movies are my life so like I go back and I watch that and I see that same thing. And that's why I was like, I'm not trying to kiss ass, but I'm being dead honest. Like you <laughs> no. are, we did a, like a year or two ago on this channel, we did a, like this top survivors, like top survivor yeah. girls in horror movie franchises. And I, we put you like near, I think it was like really 
Like, I think it was between, I was arguing with my co-hosts. I was like, <laughs> I think you should be number one. But we were all like, but also, you know, Sydney Prescott from Scream, she's been in all these movies, hasn't died yet. So we're like fighting back and forth <laughs> with how it should be. And, but no, like, honestly, your, your acting is, is, it is phenomenal. And especially for that time, like, I, I want my daughter, like I introduced her to these movies and I'm like, you know, this is how I would want you to strive as a person is to be Aww. like this girl right here. Like this character, Aww. this is woman right here. This is woman power. This is a badass that I wouldn't even want to mess with. You know, I'm already scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> I but. can't, I thank you so much. And I can't tell you, you know, as an actress, it's like, you know, you know, I do the best I can to do the role and whatnot, but, but the role of Alice, I mean, has inspired people, you know, exactly. and this is what I love about the conventions is that people come and introduce themselves and we talk and they tell me their story of when they saw it and how it you know, their parents got them into it or they, you know, whatever, they were of age and they could see it, but how the character of Alice was an inspiration, you know? Yep. It's like, fight, man, you gotta fight. So exactly, it's, um, and that's one of the beauties I think of being a performer too, is that you can influence, you know, in a yep. really great way, people's lives. Before I was an actor, there are certain actors and books. I was a big bookworm and stuff, but how they inspired me, you know, to change my ways or just to aspire to be like someone I idolized, you know? Um, and that's what life's about, you know? I mean, listen, I was a big horror fan before I even did horror movies, you know? So, yeah. No, that's, that's great. And, um, so another question real quick because I see my phone lighting up so let me get to it so oh that's hard okay I'll ask this one first you again I'll, I'm more I'm going to word it so you have been in obviously two movies out of all those out of those two movies what is your favorite moment and what is your favorite kill <laughs> That's okay. a hard one. I uh, no, I I you know, and this may seem strange, but honestly, my favorite, one of my very favorite moments in Nightmare is in Nightmare Four, is the scene when Dad comes home drunk, and and we've been waiting for him, and obviously we don't have a mom anymore. Our mom, we're going through our own loss, and he sits down, and I set down a salad. Yeah. And he says, "What am I, a rabbit?" rabbit. <laughs> Okay, and then Alice goes into her daydream world. In her daydream world, she is powerful. Exactly. She is a warrior. And mm -hmm. she turns around, stop taking it out on me, and throws the bull. I love that moment because it's like, it's there. Her power is there. She's just been afraid to express it. And she feels vulnerable. She has no mom, drunk dad. I mean, you know, so that's actually one of my very favorite. But one other moment too, I love when I do kill Freddy, that moment when um, evil will see itself and it shall die. Yeah. And it's the reflection. I mean, you guys, the story is just so layered and he explodes, right? And I love that moment when the souls are coming through the church. And she's like down like this. And they're going by me and I'm just elated. I just love the symbolic, the, the symbolic part of that part of, of the movie. Um, as far as my favorite kill, I, it just has to be Freddie's first kill with Tina in number one. Um, to me, and it still grips me to see a young woman in a white nightgown getting covered with blood. Yeah. And that's why Carrie is one of my favorite horror films. That image of some, an innocent in a white nightgown, her virginity, her innocence, 
being slaughtered. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's that's awesome uh, no the tina kill is one of my parents too and like they they try bringing it back in new nightmare you know that by dragging that girl up the wall and everything else again but no that's that is for me when everybody talks about nightmare on elm street and they talk about the kills and what's like the most iconic everybody will always mention the johnny depp bed scene and i'm like oh, interesting. that's a great scene like it really is like it's yeah, a great it scene is. but for me the tina kill is like that's crazy because like you got Ron in there watching her getting dragged up on the wall and everything. Oh it's, my like, gosh, she's it's being insane. tortured yeah. in her little white nightgown and white little panties. I mean, you know, right? it's just like it's just such an invasion. It's like a rape. It's like a you know, to me, that kill is just so layered in so many ways. Exactly. Like from the time you see the the slash marks going down her chest. Oh and my gosh! Else, like it was just. It's terrifying. It's it is like that is. And like, yeah. that's the one thing, the one thing I think everybody misses about like all the nightmare movies after, I think they want to say after part three, because part three is when Freddy started getting more funny, you know, like he's still, yeah. he was still dark, but in three, he was starting to get a little bit more funny. Yeah. But in that first movie, like it was just pure evil, you know, and then in the second movie too, it was the same thing, but then like three introduced the funny side, but then like when four came in, I think that's where they found the balance and they found a really good balance with Freddie being funny and then you know everything else going on like from the beach scene all like just everything like that's still one of my favorite scenes in Nightmare on Elm any Nightmare on Elm Street is yeah I mean when do you see a monster wearing ray bands <laughs> a monster wearing ray bands on the beach it's hysterical I it's love fabulous. that <laughs> right and like so it's still a terrifying thing like everything that's going on is still you know it's still scary but now like now they're balancing out the funny part like they're doing yeah. a good job yeah and... i mean four is quite funny um but what's still terrifying is he still finds your weakness exactly and that's how he's gonna get ya. exactly and like because like once like the one that we always talk crap about ex aside from the the remake is um <laughs> is uh part six because part six is just way too way too out there with all the it was it was not scary at all there was not a single scary no. thing in part i six, agree I you concur. know mm -hmm. and like i still love part six i think it's hilarious like i could watch it as a comedy <laughs> but <laughs> um but no like definitely i think after five that's when it kind of and then I'm, that's why i'm happy west craven did new nightmare as well because new nightmare brought back like the scary version of him like no yeah. joking anymore and that was great, but yeah, five the, was very dark. And Oswald yes. five is the one that had the least amount of screen time of Freddy. Interesting enough, of yep. Robert England as Freddy. Yeah, because they had it was the big only... Freddy, and they had you know it was it was it, it was a uh, it was it was interesting. Yeah, and again, one of my favorite scenes is in part five, the whole Super Freddy thing, and the guy that actually plays Super Freddy, I have him set up for an interview as well. Oh, some nice. Point. And. Um, so i've been excited for that and but yeah i think they said total time for robert england in part five i think was only like 15 20 minutes around there I yeah think, something yeah like that. i know and which i think is a mistake but i still you know nightmare five has that really cool the black and white and color thing with the comic yeah. book thing how ingenious was that i mean that was that was really cool and i, I want to say too I would love for you to interview Philip. Mal I'm going to say his name, last name wrong. Philip, Philip uh, Maldorano. Anyway, he did the Freddy sweater. Yeah. And he has amazing stories regarding, and he did costume in wardrobe. He was costume designer. Anyway, I would love for you to have him on your show. You will, you will have a I need to look him up. If you send me his info, I will definitely get him. Like my, I get everybody. Like I, I, I love horror movies like just it's again it's my life like I started doing this <laughs> like everybody talks about how bad COVID was but this channel started during COVID they and, say how bad what was um everybody talks about how bad COVID was right and it was it was a horrible thing which one COVID oh how bad COVID was yeah. oh yeah sorry hold on let me sorry guys let me my <laughs> volume all the way up okay and I'm trying yeah. to keep this as close to me as I can without like okay like. <laughs> <Sometimes> <laughs> And but also, um, I, I left my patio door open, so I'm hearing airplanes. So sorry. <laughs> yeah, I had to close my window just to be safe. But like, so <laughs> during forgot. COVID, 
while it was horrible, like this channel, that's when it took off because I started reaching out to people and they're like, yeah, we're, we're down to do interviews. And I was like, great, you know, and it's just been picking up and now it's like our thing. This is what we do now. And I absolutely love it. And um, so, yeah, like I, I interviewed and I'm going to butcher her name, um, Beatrice Boble, I believe is how she pronounced her last name. She was trying to tell me how to pronounce it. And like, I, I can't, like, <laughs> Boble or Boobly. I think it's Boobly, something like that. And um, yeah, Beatrice wrote a book recently, which I haven't I have read it. yet, but it is yeah, awesome. Very cool. It is a great book. I actually have it right over there. And, um, but again, a sweetheart, you know, I got to interview her and um, like this, this is just awesome. So like you agreeing to be here has been great, you know, cause like people have been asking for this. Like they've been like, can you please get Lisa Wilcox? Can you please get Lisa Wilcox? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm working on it. And um, speaking of another question that I, somebody asked me, try and get my phone out of the, okay. So if Alice was to make a return with, with everything going on right now, now that the West Craven estate has Nightmare on Elm Street back and everything else, and they were to make another movie and they wanted Alice back, how would you, and like this is directly the question here, how would you want that movie to play out as far as Alice's I, character goes? I That's did ask question. this Damn. question. Okay, guys, I am not a screenwriter. Okay, not a screenwriter or anything. I, I feel... Alice and Jacob together for sure uh and somehow I think Alice will have gone on to become either an, a, a lawyer or a doctor or yeah. something that had a presence in the town because she's got has this confidence and smarts as well and I think she would have aspired to do something you know, amazing. Um, th that's the only, that's the, that's as far as I go, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> um, you know, I thought, you know, would she become a therapist? I'm like, no, you know, a social worker, maybe a social worker, you know, um, working with but, the but something in, the, in public life is what I feel that she would have turned to. I don't think she would have remarried actually um honestly I could see that I could honestly see that I think Dan was the love of her life and and also she's like you know what I don't need a man I can I can I'm good on my own not to say she dislikes men or anything like that yeah but you know maybe she has a lover <laughs> but um yeah I think some kind of public service work she would have done I can see that I was thinking because when I first read that question when it was first sent to me I was like I could see her as a doctor just because her best friend in part five is a nurse. Yep. And I was like, ooh, she survived too. So maybe, you know, but then honestly, like you just mentioned it, um, like a social worker, like with troubled teens or something. Yes. It's like, what if like the teens were having those nightmares and like, they didn't know what it was. But, but like, that's already been done. That was already done in three. Three and technically it was done again in um in six too technically because they're yeah in the, in the so that's that. been done so I yeah. feel like but also I don't even kind of gravitate quite towards that I really gravitate towards you know a, a lawyer or a, a, a doctor of some kind a radiologist or you know something in the in uh, above and beyond being just a therapist you know um. But if you guys have any ideas and want to write a script, and, you know, submit it to Wes Craven's estate and have it made, please I mean, there do. There you go, guys. This is your opportunity. Because, <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be cool. Like, I personally, like, if there was, like, a vote for, like, who to bring back, I would definitely say. And, like, you said, Alice and Jacob. Like, Jacob is an adult now. Like, yes. that would be great because then we could see him more. He's already encountered Freddy. Like he already knows what to expect. Yes. Type and maybe Alice is a grand, you know, grandma now, you know, her right. son is married and, you know, it's like, we want to, let's really follow. So it was 1988. So we're at 34 years. So where would Alice really be, you know, in, yeah. in the true sense of time kind of thing. I mean, obviously I play younger though in Nightmare. I play about, well, let's think about it. I play about 10 years younger. Because Alice is supposed to be what 16, 17 in Nightmare 4. 
then in yeah, five, in since graduating, so you're generally 17, 18. But by then in real life, I'm already 26 years old. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway. You, you didn't look at you look like honestly back then because like I don't know what it is about the genetics back then compared to now but like back then when you're like 17 18 years old you do look like you know like a young adult now you look at people that are like 14 years old and they already look like they're in their 20s and I, it's like how <laughs> you're so right you're so right no it's because I, well, they say it's all these hormones we've been eating and beef and chicken and, and whatever. And I believe me, I eat all that stuff, but I uh, have, you know, everyone matures so much are earlier now. I mean, girls are getting their period at nine years old now. It's crazy. I know, man, that is that's scary. Um, <laughs> I know. Anyway. So a few more questions for you. I don't want to take up too much more of your time because I know you're okay. a busy woman. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask, go see the Harry Potter show tonight at uh, in I'm in Vegas right now, so I'm very excited. Ooh, nice. What time is it, by the way? I don't have a watch on. Um, right now we're in Albuquerque. It is 7:41 p.m. Oh, okay, we're good. We're good. I'm not yeah. getting picked up till a little after seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Bring on the questions. Okay. So um, let me look. Okay, this is a pretty good one. Um, and we've actually asked this from quite a few people. So how did you come by getting the role of Alice? Oh, goodness. I love this question, actually. <laughs> um, okay, so Annette Benson is the casting director from Nightmare 1 through Nightmare 5. Okay, so anyway, I'm just out of college and I was working on General Hospital. I got a recurring role in that for six months or so, whatever. So I have a manager and agent that I got through UCLA, uh, cause I did, I had a theater arts degree there. And so that in the old days, that's how managers and agents found their new, you know, new actors. Yeah. So anyway, so my manager told me that he had submitted me for the role of Nightmare for Alice. And I was so excited because you have no idea, a huge fan of Nightmare on Elm Street and yes. horror in general anyway. So, um, and then he called, then my manager says, um, well, they're not going to see you. I'm like, really? But you have to understand, um, I had plat virgin platinum blonde hair. <laughs> Think of the 80s, the makeup, yep. right? I the looked Madonna. like a prom queen cheerleader girl, although I was never any of those things in real life. <laughs> um, so my headshot, because they submit a headshot, black and white was back then, black and white. Headshot. So it was kind of understandable because I didn't look like, you know, an Alice, you know. Whoops, did something just happen? Oh, my friend's calling. Okay, can you still hear me? <laughs> yeah, Dude, I still it see just you. changed. John, why are you calling me? I told him I had a podcast with you. Ah, he's the guy picking, taking me to the show. <laughs> anyway, um, so they went through hundreds of actresses. They auditioned hundreds of actresses and Annette Benson is the one who told me the story. They couldn't find their Alice. So they went to their reject pile. Hi. <laughs> and you I were finally in a reject had the chance. Well, it, you know, we're the have pushed aside. No, because you know, you have to understand they get hundreds of submissions and they're gonna yeah. look in the eight by tens, look at the back where your resume is taped or you know, stapled on, right? Look, da, da, no, mm, mm, mm. yes, mm, mm, no, no, yes, yes. That I mean that's that's the process because back then it was a physical, like these tangible items were sent to casting offices and they tangibly yeah. go through everything, right? So I was in the no pile. Anyway, they went through their no pile and I finally got a chance to audition. So I, you know, read, uh, I don't even think I got the script. I just had the scenes and they give you a character breakdown. So I went in with like no makeup, dirty stringy hair. Uh, you know, I wore a uh, pale yellow, which is like my worst color, pale pink and pale yellow, my worst color. Uh, and I, I totally gravitated towards this role. She was, Alice was totally me in grade school, uh, shy, introverted, you know, the one looking out the window at my cute neighbor, you know, I wish he would, he's so cute. Alan is so cute. I wish he would look <laughs> at me. You know what I mean? So I went in and then I had a call back on a Friday. 
Um, I read with uh, Tuesday Night, who played Kristen, and Rennie Harlan was there, of course. And I was getting married that Sunday, 150 people wedding. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I learned on my honeymoon that I, I had gotten the role. <laughs> and uh, and just another note to that, just a little side story I have to say, is that so Robert and Engel and I were okay. I was really like, you know, uh, so nervous because of Robert Engel. Oh my god! Anyway, and he's wonderful. He's lovely, lovely, lovely. But anyway, so he only knows me in the makeup trailer with you know my hair now with you know they added oil. They not only would rinse my hair, they were adding oil to it to make it look really down and yucky and and the clothes I'm wearing and Robert had only seen me that way and he got to see me look a little more nifty you know as you know I evolve as Alice but he always said so anyway he and his wife they had a wedding reception party thing which I went to and this is after the filming of Nightmare 4 so I'm at the bar blondish hair coming back my makeup I'm wearing this sexy black you know cocktail dress smoking a cigarette at the bar <laughs> and having a glass of wine Robert didn't even recognize me <laughs> oh wow <laughs> <laughs> and I only repeat this because you know we do panels and whatnot in the conventions and he's the one who told this story and I was like oh my god that's hysterical that's he's great. like wow Lisa's actually a hot babe. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever quote. So that is there's awesome. a long-winded answer to that question. Uh, best best answers are like that. Right? <laughs> Thank you for that. That is a great story. Like I absolutely love that. Um, I've gotten to meet Robert twice now, and uh -huh. he he's such a sweetheart. And like I I've asked him about you too, and he every time I ask him about you, he's like I love her, absolutely love her, and I was like. Right? Ah. <laughs> she's awesome and so i mean you got that praise from that man too and like for the horror community that's Aww. like you know how he says in nightmare on elm street this is god like in the horror community that is god pretty much so like, <laughs> you, i mean that that's just freaking amazing and um okay let's see next question next question i'm trying to bump these out as quickly as possible so you can go see harry potter love harry potter um i saved that one for last uh do, 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 do. <laughs> one of my buddies who is subscribed to the channel wants to know if you will be coming back to albuquerque anytime soon oh <laughs> i figured i might uh, as well ask it real quick it's a fair no, question i'm pretty sh i'm almost certain i will be at least in texas next year so uh -huh. i don't know if it'll be albuquerque and i can't really say but uh, you know, wink, wink. just I know Texas is its own country, you know. Oh, yeah. But I, you know, but I will at least be in Texas. So you just are gonna have to hop in the car and come see me. <laughs> I'm out there every year for free okay. there. <laughs> um, okay, so that that's another that's a good question. I'll let him know that. Uh, let's see another question. No. Uh, Nope. Not asked. <laughs> Somebody asked how old you were. It's like, I'm not even going to ask that. That's dumb. What's the question? <laughs> uh, how old somebody, am I? Somebody asked how old you were. It's like, why would I ask her that? <laughs> I don't care. Listen, it's already on IMDb. Okay. My birth date is on there. I am 58 and a half years old. Which I still don't believe. I think you're lying. I think you're younger than that. You're, just, <laughs> you're lying to us. You're trying to make it look better. Like, I, yeah, I'm this old. You, you're really it's not. All no, it's all genetics because my mom and my dad never looked like their age. And for me, it's certainly not the red wine and cigarettes. So what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> um, so now question that I'm going to ask for the, sh the channel. Um, given how big of a following you have right now, because you brought such an iconic character to life and made this person who she was, and you have so many fans, um, what would you like to say to your fans? And if there's any advice that you could give them, what would it be? Oh my goodness. It would be follow your passion, follow your passion. Um, you know, here I was this introverted girl, but I was so fascinated by 
characters and plays and theater and TV and all of that. I never dreamed I would become an actress. And then um, I really accidentally fell into acting and, and it did become my passion. And it's this all that I ever wanted in my, in my life. So if you have like a passion or a skill or something, you know, follow, follow that. I mean, I know we've all had to have our nine to five jobs. I've had them for sure. Um, but I'd say, don't, don't throw that away. Don't throw it away. You've got to cherish it, you know, just like for the that. joy that it brings yourself and you'll find your, the joy you have and your passion brings joy to others as well. You know, whether it's art or decorating or, you know, uh, writing, you know, uh, poetry, a book, um, creating a film, you know, and, uh, and you'll learn soon enough if you're good at it or not good at it, you know, and then you might oh. have to change paths, you know, but you've got to try, you've got to try it. Keep on keeping on. Yeah. And the last question I'm going to ask you, normally my co-host asked this question, but she has been busy doing mom duties and everything else. So um, we asked this of every, every celebrity that we've ever had on here, and we're going to always ask it. What is your favorite scary movie? <laughs> have to. Uh, my, okay, I don't have one. I'm sorry. I just can't really pin it down. But I'm really more about uh, Rosemary's Baby. Nice. Carrie. And, I, and Rosemary's Berry Baby, oh, that freaks me out. That movie That's is a great movie. terrifying. It is so crazy and psychological. Uh, and I love Carrie. And uh, because those girls that bullied her totally remind me of the girls who bullied me, you know, little mother bitches. Uh, <laughs> and, and then um, The Exorcist, you know, yep. I, I'm sorry, that is just, so fascinating to me about an exorcism to begin with and i do believe i totally believe in that and i've had paranormal experiences in my well one uh poltergeist experience over a weekend i won't even go into that we'll do it next time we have an interview <laughs> oh yeah definitely i'm bringing you back now <laughs> <laughs> um so like what the cool thing is is like you are the first person to say rosemary's baby out of all of them i remember really? every answer you are the first one to say rosemary's baby which i absolutely oh. love i believe you're also the first one to mention carrie um we get exorcist a lot like that is one of the ones because yeah. it's the exorcist you know yeah, it's like one third. of those iconic movies it's like but, third yeah rosemary's best, baby you know um but oh no rosemary's baby is total psychological it is coaster. it screws with you and that is damn that was a good answer that took me by surprise i'm happy <laughs> I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that. But um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, Miss Wilcox, uh, Mrs. You're married. Mrs. No, Wilcox. No, divorce, divorce. Oh, okay, Miss then. Just call me Miss Lisa. Wilcox, <laughs> thank you again so, so much. Thank for... you so much. I had a great time. So did I. Um, definitely want to get you back on here with my co host because she's a huge fan as well. So we will definitely get you back out here. You know um, what? We'll do it. And, you know, I've got these other films coming out. And you guys be sure to check out Mystery Spot, uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu. I don't know. You'll, you'll find it. And, um, you know, check my website, too. And I'll try to keep you all posted on where I'm at and what I'm doing. <laughs> what I'll go ahead and do is I will link them once this video is uploaded. Oh, okay. I send it to my editor let him do his magic and then I upload it. Okay. So once it's ready to go, I will link your website. That way they yeah. have a direct link. That's my dog saying hi. Oh, um, you heard my dog <laughs> squeaking probably in the background, my miniature dog. Uh, yeah, that'd be great to link it um, because also I do, you know, I have autographs. I have my little mini nunchucks for sale there. <laughs> and then I'm adding, I have a new, some new stuff. Oh my God, I think you're gonna love it. It's a Crave In coffee mug. Yes. <laughs> and a Crave In lunch plate wow. and a crave in the crave in menu that is awesome and an alice badge an alice you the alice thing, badge? You know, i play alice right anyway uh, it's it's pretty fun so all right well we'll keep in touch and let me know when it, it this airs or whatever how this works yes ma'am once once i have it back from my editor and all that what we do is i upload it and then i'll send it to you either via facebook or email 
okay. and I'll send it to you. That way you have the link. And then I also share it on Facebook yeah, do and all email, the other social media. Email, email, my e because you have my personal email now. So yes, yeah, just do my email. I, there's too many messages on Facebook and Instagram. I, and things just get lost. <laughs> so anyway, it. all right. You have a great night, Jeff. You as well. Enjoy Harry and Potter. I, again, and I, I will talk to you again about soon. your friend who passed away. I'm just, very, Thank very Thank you. Um, yeah. Oh. That, I mean, that, that took me by surprise. Thank you. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, All right. It's been All hard right, there have... in the in the cosplay community out here. They're really, like, really big, big person. Like, everybody knew her. And so it, it definitely sucks. But, like, one of the reasons why I do this is because, you know, she was one of those ones that encouraged me to stick with it. So I do thank you for that. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh. I appreciate it. All right. Well, bless your, bless your, bless your heart, and um, and uh, I'll uh, expect an email from you whenever you know, whenever it happens. So, yes, ma'am. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Enjoy okay. your night. Thank you. And now I got to go charge my phone. <laughs> 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 Ciao. Bye. Bye.